I was not expecting one of these recent books I read to go onto my little informal list in my head of favorite books of all time, but it did. Hi, welcome. Today I'm going to recommend four books that I absolutely loved and I'm so glad I read, and I hope you will like two. Number one, The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. He is the author of the best-selling book, Cutting for Stone, which a lot of people have read and loved. Abraham Verghese is a medical doctor and professor at the School of Medicine at Stanford University, and he's written four best-selling books, which I find very impressive. The Covenant of Water is huge. It's more than 700 pages, and all of them are well worth reading. If you're like me and really enjoy a good book, you'll love that, because when a book is amazing and so satisfying to read, you never want it to end. That's this book. It covers the years from 1900 to 1977 and follows three generations of a family in Kerala, India. It starts on the night before a 12-year-old girl is supposed to go off and marry a 40-year-old man she's never met. She's scared, and so are we as we read about it. Her new husband, though, is fortunately good to her and lets her alone as she grows up in his household. When she's older, they fall in love and we follow her as she becomes the family's matriarch. In each generation of that family, someone dies by drowning, and that's especially unfortunate because Kerala, where they live, is surrounded by water. It's a curse on the family, or a medical mystery, and very interesting to follow. The book also has a thread about a young man from Scotland who's becoming a doctor and ends up in India. Both those threads and how they intersect are really interesting and satisfying. When The Covenant of Water came out earlier this year, it instantly went on the New York Times bestseller list. It was also an Oprah's book club pick. And in fact, Oprah created a six-part podcast about the book. I'll put a link to the YouTube version of the podcast below. She sits down and talks to Verghese about each of the 10 parts of the book in great detail. It's really a deep dive. So after you read the book, you might want to check out the podcast. I really liked this book. I liked the characters. I liked the storylines. And I really appreciated the writing. Here is an example of the writing. This is just one line that I highlighted. But such memories are woven from gossamer threads. Time eats holes in the fabric. And these she must darn with myth and fable. So that's The Covenant of Water. I read the print book, but Abraham Verghese narrates the book himself, and I've heard great things about the audiobook. You'll see if you watch that Oprah series about it. He's interesting, and he also has a lovely voice. It's no stretch to imagine that he'd be a great narrator. I will probably listen to it at some point. Number two is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I read this right when it came out before it was announced as a Pulitzer Prize winner, and I was so happy when I heard that it won. It's another big book, 560 pages. It's about a boy who's born to a teenage single mother living in a trailer in Southern Appalachia and his growing into adulthood. I was fascinated to read Kingsolver's story about how she came to write this book. She was in England and she stayed overnight in Charles Dickens's house. She said she didn't think he was there, but he was. Charles Dickens, of of course, wrote David Copperfield, which is a story of institutional poverty and um, how it damaged children. And King Solver said she'd been wanting to tell the story of Appalachia, where she lives, and poverty and drugs, but she hadn't been able to figure out how to tell the story, and she didn't know if people would want to read it. Charles Dickens told her, of course, people would read it. And so she was inspired to sort of reimagine his Victorian story, David Copperfield, into uh, modern day Appalachia and Demon Copperhead. On the plane going home, she sketched out her idea for the novel. She sort of made a line for each chapter of the book David Copperfield and then one for Demon Copperhead and sort of started summarizing what each chapter was or would be. Her book starts with the line, I got myself born, which is Demon's southern expression for David Copperfield's opening line about when he was born. Her main character, Demon Copperhead, is the narrator and his nickname comes from his attitude and his hair color, Demon Copperhead. He ends up living in various foster homes and we see how the opioid epidemic overtakes the poor landscape where he lives. We know that he survives because he's narrating the book, which is nice to know. He's looking back from the future as he lived through a really hard time and place. I really like Demon. He has a sense of humor and he's pretty matter of fact about his situation. He just keeps going on. It's beautifully written and imagined and so interesting. And ultimately it's hopeful. I listened to an interesting interview with Barbara Kingsolver speaking about Demon Copperhead and I will put a link to it below. It's really rich, interesting writing, a great story and worth reading. Number three is called Lady Tan's Circle of Women. I read this book in less than a day which I remember I didn't have time for, but I just couldn't put it down because it was compelling. I liked the acknowledgement section at the end of the book as much as what came before, 
That's where Lisa C., the author, wrote that during the pandemic, she noticed a book on her shelves she'd never read before. It was called Reproducing Women, Medicine, Metaphor, and Childbirth in Late Imperial China. She sat down to read it, and she found a mention of a woman doctor who wrote about her medical cases in the year 1511. She found that the book was still available, including in an English translation, and her next historical fiction novel began coming together in her head. I love knowing that background. It's really a master who can tell a story about a time so long before our own in such amazing detail that you feel like you're there. And also one that's set in a culture that's so different from our own, but is so relatable and understandable. I really liked reading what is clearly very detailed research into settings, hierarchy, life in privileged society, medical care, and ethics of that time, and so much more. And the plot is very interesting. This is a fascinating story about women in 14 and 1500s China, specifically a female character with high standing. That's an unintentional play on words when you consider foot binding, which crippled women and limited their mobility. We see the protagonist move throughout the seasons of her life, first getting trained in doctoring and then being a doctor. And I was very interested in the story and the characters, and I just couldn't put it down. It was such a good read. I really recommend it. Lisa C. has really written some amazing books. I also recently read her book, The Island of Sea Women, which was wonderful. That one is historical fiction about two girls on a Korean island who are learning to die with other women whose livelihood is diving for seafood on the ocean floor. I really recommend that one. The first book of Lisa C's I read was eons ago. On Gold Mountain is a memoir that tells the story of 100 years, starting with her family's immigration from China to America, where they found the dream, Gold Mountain. Number four is Love and Saffron by Kim Fei. This book is lesser known, but I just loved it. I kept reading about it being compared to the book 84 Charing Cross Road, which is one of my all-time favorite books ever. So I checked it out and I liked it so much that I think it too has actually gone onto my list of all-time favorites. I remember thinking, I didn't know there were still new books that would go onto that list. It was kind of exciting. It's an epistolary novel, so it's written in letters and it's set in the 1960s. It starts with a sort of fan letter from a young woman in Los Angeles to an older woman who lives on an island off Washington State and writes a food column. The younger woman is a wannabe food writer and she sends the more established writer a packet of saffron and a letter and they begin a friendship that goes on for years and years and years. It's about food and friendship, some of the cultural challenges of the 1960s, and more. It's a really, really good book, and I highly recommend it. Short read. I think I read it in an afternoon and really, really enjoyed it. So those are my four recent good reads. I hope you heard something there that made you want to go check one of those books out. My name is Leslie, and this is a brand new channel about embracing midlife. If you do want to follow along on this channel, please do all the things like this post, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell so you'll be notified when there's new content. I am starting from absolute scratch here, and those are all the things that will help me grow this channel. Thank you very much. See you next time.